Hey stats folks, I want to show you a couple of typos that can pop up if you are using either one sample proportion Z test, one sample proportion Z interval, or the two sample versions of it. I'm just going to run through it on the one sample proportion Z test and I'm going to make up some numbers here. So if we go over to stat tests, and like I said, you can do this for either of options five or six or A and B for the, the interval versions, but let me go with five right now. So I'm just gonna use these numbers as is. Those look great. So this would work. I guess my null proportion is allegedly 80%, and in my sample data, I had 26 successes out of 50 trials. And we could go down and hit calculate, right? Everything's gonna pop up real nice. Ooh, we got a nice p-value of one. But I want you to see your sample proportion was 52%, right? And 52% quite literally came from 26 out of 50, right? My sample proportion. Okay, so let me show you some errors that are common enough here. It's pretty frequent, or it happens often enough that we actually, instead of putting the frequency count, the number of successes in our sample, into the x value, we mistakenly put our sample proportion. So instead of putting 26, because I had 26 successes out of 50 trials, I put 52%. I put the actual relative frequency, or the proportion, right? And then when I do that, you're gonna see you get a domain error, right? So you wanna be careful, and in the second and third lines for your confidence interval, excuse me, not your confidence interval, this was the hypothesis test. The second and third line for your hypothesis test, they have to be whole numbers. And here's the other thing I've had some students do is they just get these mixed up. And here's what I mean by mixed up. Let me scroll down, right? This would have been, this should have been 26 out of 50, right? Well, sometimes students put it in the other order. Like they'll go 50 and then they'll put 26 here. So they flip flop them. And if that happens, your calculator is gonna freak out because it's saying, what you're telling your calculator is, I had 26 trials and out of those 26 trials, I had 50 successes which is impossible. You can't have 50 successes if you're only sampling 26 uh, folks or 26 objects. So you can see when I head down here, I'm gonna get a different kind of domain error. So just be on the lookout for domain errors that pop up when you are running this one sample prop Z test, or again, like I said, a prop interval, or you could go with the two sample version. All right, all right, thanks so much, bye.